Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kate Zatakavienka, and today we are going to talk with Igor Vasilev, an experienced investor on the American stock market. I would like to know how we can make money when uh, the market or uh, probably some assets go down. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. So what, are your, what are your suggestions? And especially, I wonder about uh, strategy with selling shorts. Okay, okay, great. All right, uh, it is a quite interesting strategy because a lot of people understand that you can make money, definitely can make money when they uh, like the share, particular share or the index or whatever asset you're using is growing, okay, in price. Uh, everyone understands how it works, but then uh, not everyone understands that you can make money also on the opposite direction when the uh, stock or a particular asset is actually falling in price. You can make money as well. And there are people who understand that and you're using that uh, strategies. There are different ways how you can make money. Uh, I'm doing that. Some of them involve options, futures, and uh, the simplest one, it would be uh, just selling uh, stocks in short, right? So it's called shorting shares. Now, and that's probably the question which you're asking. Yeah, how, how so, exactly are we doing it? So the first question may be what assets should we use okay. of a good quality or maybe not so good? And um, where where do we uh, where do we begin? Okay, first of all, probably uh, let me explain what the strategy is, how it works. Now, when we play in long or when we are making money in the long duration, so it's been, uh, the price is growing up. So what we do, we buy shares, uh, mm -hmm. for example, for ten dollars, and then we sell them when they reach twelve dollars, right? So and we make two dollars on each share. So if we bought one thousand shares, we bought two thousand dollars. Okay, that's simple. That, that's what you usually come uh, for the stock market to make money when the assets go up. <laughs> Correct, but when the uh, market goes down you can do opposite transactions so first mm -hmm. you don't have shares but you can sell them okay you can sell shares and then already when they go back down so for example from 12 dollars if they go to 10 dollars you can buy them back uh, for 10 dollars okay and make these two dollars difference do, now, do i sell my shares no if i don't so have shares this is the thing, right? So some people say in order to sell something, you have to have something. Yeah. In this uh -huh. case, in order to have something, you borrow it from the broker, your broker. So uh -huh. basically okay. what happens, the share price uh, of particular stock, $12. And you personally believe that uh, this stock is going to go down. So what you do, if you have this agreement with your broker, you borrow shares from the broker and you sell them to the market to a particular person. So it happens instantly. So you don't have to apply for that. No. So if you already have this permission with your broker, as soon as you want to sell those shares, you just create the order to sell and the borrowing happens automatically. So that's how it happens. And when you create this transaction, so if you see that you want to sell 1,000 shares at $12, so what you do, you create the sell order, you sell it, and then the next thing happens. On your account, instantly you see minus ten one minus one thousand shares. Do I pay something for this? They pay you. They you get twelve thousand dollars because you sold it for twelve dollars okay. for one share. As soon as you sold it, they pay you twelve thousand dollars. Now you have twelve thousand dollars in your account, but you have minus one thousand shares. Now, important part here, you cannot withdraw this cash because some people say, Oh, cool, now I borrowed <laughs> shares. Sell them and they would throw them out. Of course. Money. No, you cannot do that. Okay, broker won't allow you uh. to do that. Now you have to get uh, money as a collateral on your account. Mm -hmm. Not only that, brokers usually they have certain margin requirements. Of course, so you have to have certain amount of money on the top of that or buying power. All right. Like now, what if I have for about ten thousand dollars on my account? So am it, I allowed? The, am I allowed to use the strategy? Okay, first of all, uh, majority of brokers, at least brokers which I work with, uh, they wouldn't let you to use this strategy because they understand the risk of these strategies uh, unless you have certain uh, trading permission. Now, uh, some of my brokers, they require to have at least $100,000 uh, okay. before they will allow you to have the strategy. It's one. Other brokers, they will ask you to pass certain tests 
where they will have questions in order to distinguish your knowledge. If you don't pass that test, they won't allow you to use those strategies. Okay. And I presume it is a very good idea because a lot of people are trying to make money on stock market without even proper understanding how it works. All right. Especially short strategy. Sorry, yeah. it reminds me uh, how at the beginning you should pass the test to drive Tesla. You do not just buy it, you pass a test to drive Tesla. Oh, really? I didn't know. So because it's okay. risky. The same yeah, is here, I guess. All right, okay, fantastic. So this is the thing. And uh, what happens here when you have this cash and you have certain collateral, so the main idea mm -hmm. to make money like that. So if you sold your shares at $12, you receive twelve thousand dollars in your account. Okay, okay. you sold shares. Then you wait. The share price goes down, 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 down. Reaches, reaches. Uh, for example, uh, ten dollars. What you do? You buy same amount of shares, a thousand shares, for ten dollars. Now you pay in total ten thousand dollars. It means that you receive twelve, pay ten, two thousand dollars remain in your account. And when you buy in those shares, instantly they are given back to the broker. So on your account is zero amount of share so you gave uh -huh. it to the broker that's it you exited the short trade and have two thousand dollars for profit on your account. and i keep my profit well of course you keep your profit okay, okay. and that's why it's very attractive and a lot of people they see okay this is perfect time sounds easy <laughs> i make money when the stock goes down and i make money when the stock goes up and i don't have to wait until it falls down now it is attractive uh, strategy also because usually if the stock price grows up for example for three months when it falls it falls three four five times faster okay so and uh, that's why a lot of people prefer this way because they believe that you can make money much faster on the fall rather than on the growth uh, but what about mm -hmm. in case it does not go down yes this is the probably the biggest risk because you have unlimited risk uh, assuming that the share can double in price, triple in price, quadruple in price. And the recent events that showed us that some, in some cases, uh, it was like 10 times fold, like I mean, growth. And it's so quick. And people even couldn't close their position uh, while it was growing because there wasn't enough uh, liquidity on the market. Now, it was short squeeze. Mm -hmm. We'll probably talk about it later, but I will explain you how it works if it works different directions. So, for instance, you sold for $12 a stock. Now, you receive twelve thousand dollars, and then the stock price uh, still growing. Okay, and mm -hmm. it went up, for example, to fifteen dollars. Now, in this particular case, you would have to buy those shares at fifteen dollar price. So you pay fifteen thousand dollars for your thousand. What if shares. I don't want to buy them then? So you still keep them, okay? And uh, you you can keep this position until the broker uh, decides yeah. to close it in. in um, like itself and the main reason here for instance if you have buying power of let's say seven uh, like all together after you receive this uh, twelve thousand dollars in total mm -hmm. you have twenty thousand dollars free cash on your account which you can use so it means that the share price can go only to twenty thousand and if it goes above you won't be able already to buy this thousand shares broker mm -hmm. won't allow that broker at certain level they will send you the message that look you're in, uh, getting into uh, margin uh, call and uh, they will themselves close your position so they will buy your that particular stock at whatever level they decide so if it is twenty dollars so they will buy it to twenty dollars mm. and give it take okay. uh, this to themselves so they they never wrong brokers will never ever uh, lose money on that particular trade okay because they borrowed money uh, like stock to you and they know how much money you have in your account so it is impossible to withdraw it and it is impossible to get into the margin call so they will control it instantly so, so i have a they... huge responsibility to my broker absolutely absolutely so okay. that's why and that if situation like that happens so what uh, what happened so you sold it for 12 dollars and you bought it at 12 20 dollars so mm -hmm. you lost seven dollars on the share which is seven thousand i'm paying the difference of course you're paying a difference as a trader so that's why it's very um kind of dangerous strategy because uh it can go into thirty dollars to fifty dollars to one hundred dollars right so it's there is no limit upside and that that's why you have to understand when you're shorting what exactly you're doing on the top of that particular risk there are also certain things that happens uh, first of all when you borrow uh, shares from the broker 
a broker is not giving it to you for free, right? So you ah. have to pay. You have to pay certain fees. Uh, same as if you use your margin, if you borrow cash from the broker, uh, you pay certain interest on the cash. So similar story. Is it, to, is no, it like broker commission? It is broker. It's not only trading commission, which broker has. It's like a, for providing like I buy, you. Like I buy stocks. Yeah. Like, so it's, it would be same transaction, like I would say buy and sell. The broker will have. But on the top of that, for the fact, the longer you hold this uh, short shares, the more you pay this uh, commission. Okay, so if you like interest to the bank, like, correct, correct, correct. Okay, mm -hmm, I see. Uh, the only thing here that broker they have different brokers they might have different uh, interest for borrowing mm -hmm. shares, one thing. but also they can have different uh, fees for different shares. So for shams, for some shares it could be higher, for some uh, shares it could be low. All right, it's one thing. Oh, it's different. Uh, another uh, very important part here that if you borrowed shares from the broker, now you are responsible for paying dividends. So, because can you mm. imagine this? Person A gave you gave you broker shares. You took the shares and sold them to somebody else. Now the same lot of shares is owned by two people, but the okay. company will be paying dividends. They can pay only to one lot of shares. So it means that one of these lots uh, won't get dividends if uh, there was a situation like that. So that's why broker, what they do, they take money from you, from the person who sold share shot, they're responsible for selling dividends. I remember I had the situation with Nokia uh, quite a few years back. I had short position on Nokia, that price was $9. And uh, I had uh, 10,000 shares uh, like short. And mm -hmm. what happened? Nokia at that time they sold uh, their phone like business Lumia if you remember the mobile phones Lumia yeah yeah they mm -hmm, they tried to <laughs> and they decided part of this uh, cash they pay like to as a dividend to their shareholders and uh, oh. because it wasn't predictable it was in between uh, dividend payments so I didn't expect that and then I see this amount surprise and, uh, eight thousand eight 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 thousand dollars was deducted from my account at that time. So Do you have to pay them immediately? Yeah, as soon as they like on the same day when the dividend paid, they deducted from you. I don't remember exactly on that on what day it was, but it's still it's a dividend record day. So as long as you're recorded that you have short shares on the same day, uh, that's it. So you're liable mm. for this. Day. Okay, that's what happened to me. Uh, luckily enough, that share price dropped from nine dollars to eight dollars. I made uh, one dollar on the share, so I kind of uh, covered that eight thousand uh, loss. So escaped, making, escaped uh, from this situation. Oh yeah, but it is uh, it is a responsibility, and you have to be aware. So that's why if you're shorting shares which pay high dividends, you have to think. You have twice. to keep it in mind. Yeah. Correct, especially if you, because some people they short shares for a short period of time, let's say a week or two weeks, and uh, you have to consider if they have this dividend payment during this period. Okay, so, okay, so the next question is, uh, what shares should we use for this kind of strategies? What kind of mm -hmm. shares of a good quality or maybe not? Okay, very good question. Uh, of course, if you short in certain stocks, you have to understand that bes bes behind the ticker name, like there is a business, okay? Uh -huh. And uh, if you're shorting that particular stock, you bet on the fact that business is going to go down. And of course, if you just base your decision on uh, technical analysis, it's I personally yeah, believe in gambling, mm -hmm. okay? Because the technical analysis is a presentation of past price movement. Okay, and it's nothing uh, to do what is happening within the business. You have to understand yeah. the business. A, lo a lot of traders says that you should keep track on technical analysis. That's all. You you have to keep on that, but uh, if you especially if you play big money, uh, technical analysis not always works, and uh, so that's why you. And like I don't know any trader who trades like hundreds of thousand dollars and they don't look at fundamentals. It would be silly thing to do, right? So if you're a small player uh, with several thousand dollars, definitely behave as uh, those investors because that's what they do. They analyze those uh, kind of particular situations. So basically, what kind of businesses you need to, to have? So businesses mm -hmm. which are long market. So for instance, they are selling less product 
year after year. They're already in decline. They're making less profit, already unprofitable. They have high level of debt, right? And you understand that even from the current price perspective, because usually those those businesses are already beaten down. Okay, their price is already down. But sometimes, like in any business, they have this moment of clarity, then they announce, okay, we develop new strategy, everything is good. And at that moment, because the CEOs, uh, they promote something, the price might uh, like uh, go up. But you understand that it's agony, like business is in agony, it's already dying. And it's just they're trying to survive, trying to do all the things. If you understand the structure of the business, business in the market, you understand that this business most likely is going to go into drain, right? So that's where you can short. Okay, on those uh, momentum hypes, you can short the stock, and after that, uh, usually it kind of uh, goes down, and you can make make money on that. So definitely don't bet on good companies because some people are trying to uh, short companies which have huge growth. If they, I remember. Uh, we have one investment club member. Uh, the company was Nvidia a few years back. In mm -hmm. from twenty-four dollars, and uh, he was planning to short it because, based on technical analysis, the move was between twelve and eighteen and twenty for the last. It was going up, up, up. Yeah, right? and he planned to move it to like uh, that. The company will go Some, somewhere in the time. It will go down, right? <laughs> But in reality, NVIDIA, if you now understand it, moved to nearly $300 and uh, never went down. So if he kept these short positions, he would lose a fortune, right? Of course, it didn't happen instantly, but still, you have to understand the risk. The company was solid fundamentally. It was growing. They were introducing new products, especially they got into the cryptocurrency like market because uh, they were producing all this equipment for farming. And uh, the demand was huge. And uh, he didn't understand that. He didn't look at fundamentals of the company. The only decision he tried to make mm -hmm. based, was based on technical analysis. So you definitely have to avoid uh, this situation, yes. So first step, we use fundamentals and we look for companies that have problems, that have a high level of debt, right? Correct, yeah. So what about um, short squeeze? Uh, you already told that uh, uh, there could be a situation where uh, the company is not good of not good quality. We expect that it go down, but instead the stocks uh, go up right away. What happens at that time? Yeah, recently a uh, few companies experienced uh, this type of events. Now, you need to understand uh, how short squeeze works. Okay, basically. Like when you see this giant green yeah. in. Uh, well, yeah, okay. So, okay, I'll explain. So, majority of traders, when they trade, they have certain rules. And the rules are very, very identical uh, over the market, right? So, if you open the position at a certain level, you have a stop loss. If you don't have a stop loss, it's really risky. Now, majority of people that have a stop loss, especially when they short position, so, or hedge them. So, what happens in this case? Now, imagine that uh, if I sold uh, shares for $12, and I uh, believe that it's going to go to 10, and I'm going to uh -huh. make it go. Now, but at the same time, I am protecting myself and I am setting the stop loss. So if the share price keeps going up, uh, I decide to close this position at $12.50. So when it goes to 50 cents up, uh, roughly around like 4%, right? So I'm closing this position. Uh -huh. okay, and I now, imagine that at the same time, every trader, who open the short position has exactly the same stop loss on the mm -hmm. same level. It means that if the share price moves up on that moment, all these orders they triggered at the same time, instantly, simultaneously. And imagine that one hundred thousand dollars or not dollars shares are ordered to purchase. Okay, but there are no shares. There is no volume there. So probably there are only sellers for 5,000 uh, shares in the market. So it means that 100 shares are ordered to purchase at market, but only okay. 5,000 available at uh, $12.50. So they instantly purchase by person who uh, send the order first, and uh, then the price moves to the next available order to sell. So if somebody sells for $12, another 5,000, 
or the share jumps. So if there is a gap and there are no sellers higher, so is that the share price start instantly moving up until this market order of 100,000 shares is filled. So, and if these shares are, like we say, uh, somebody is selling for $20,000, it means that the share price is going to be uh, moving instantly to $20,000. So limit order, you have to understand that limit order is not a guarantee that you sell at $12.50. The limit order is just a trigger. So when it gets to $12.50, your trigger to buy at the market unless you specify that uh, it is a stop limit order so and what happens after that whatever price person is selling you shares you you would be paying that so that's what happened to short squeeze now the trigger for short squeeze is when a lot of sellers place the order to buy simultaneously and it's all also happens only happens when there are a lot of short sellers okay short usually happen to companies where a lot a lot of short sellers uh, uh, for example last uh, week I recorded a video where I showed how uh, some particular company had a short squeeze and the price moved from thirty dollars to fifty three dollars within a day so it's like double now the price dropped down again because it, like short squeeze is over but the interesting thing about this that uh, People, is, there, is there any chance that we can predict this kind of situation? Yeah, so you kind of at least to see where the risk is. Because uh, what happened with that particular company, if you go to certain analytical platforms, right, and when you read Finviz, for example, you can go there and you can see the volume of shorters. On that particular company, which I, I kind of analyzed, 60% of whole shares outstanding, they were shorted. Whole shares of that particular company. Yeah, so on, it means that on the market, sixty percent of shares were borrowed and then sold to the market. Now, can you imagine if uh, one person, let's say uh, John Smith, right? Uh, John Smith gave to somebody one hundred thousand shares, like, mm -hmm. and he borrowed from John Smith one hundred thousand shares and then sold it to the market. But the same John Smith bought them. So now John Smith has two hundred thousand shares. You have minus one hundred thousand shares, and then you're trying to buy it, and John is, doesn't sell it. Okay, and maybe he released by uh, like 100 shares and the, he increases the price and the price carrier rockets, but you cannot buy them because practically all shares owned by Joe Smith and he's not releasing the shares and unless they double or triple in price. So that's what happened recently with some stocks. And uh, it is a huge risk. So when you see the huge volume of shorters, it's better not to short the stock, even if you believe that uh, the stock definitely goes to drain because if situation like that happens, uh, I mean, if everyone trying to s instantly buy back, mm -hmm. so the price is going to skyrocket. And the problem is that you won't be able to cover your position. That, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to close. It your happens position. really quickly, right? Really, really quickly. It's one day you go somewhere, you don't monitor the market. But even if you monitor the market, you place the trade and you want to buy at 11.50 or 12.50, but then. And there is uh, no opportunity to buy. Opportunity, absolutely. Because there is a queue. Okay. And if already <laughs> one millisecond later than somebody else who placed 100,000. I go euros, first, you go second. <laughs> so this, this is the Very so risky have, situation, I say. <laughs> Yeah, there are other strategies to make money when the stock market goes down. Uh, you can probably one of them is using put options when you uh, buy. Is, it, is it less risky? It is uh, in the sense that you're placing certain amount of uh, money, like mm -hmm. usually, like let's say for the same twelve dollar share, you might place only one dollar, right? Like you so, invest much less. Yes, of course. So, uh, like when you're shorting, you don't invest at all. You got straight away cash. Okay, you don't have to put any money. In this particular case, uh, it works like insurance. So you insure the stock that is going to go down, and you're able to sell it at twelve dollars. So you you don't uh, borrow that stock, but you kind of uh, have a right to sell the stock at twelve dollars. And if the stock goes to eight, then you buy the stock, and then you mm -hmm. sell it at twelve dollars. So it's like uh, you just buying the right to sell the stock at $12. And of course, okay. if the stock doesn't go down, the only thing that you're losing is this right. Okay, whatever premium you pay for this right, uh, it expires because you buy it for a certain period of time. And um, if you were wrong, at least you're losing just that premium which you paid. You okay. don't have unlimited 
uh, loss there. Okay. That sounds you more. Need you need to understand uh, for how much to pay because sometimes it's uh, too expensive premium as well. So uh, it's it's not as simple as it seems. Uh, you still have to understand the strategy in details. And how how should we how should we learn it? Uh, well, basically, our academy, uh, we have a special program where we teach how to operate with options, but also we, uh, in another program where we look at fundamentals of the company, where you try kind of learn how to understand if this company for growth and you invest money, put cash there and you uh, the company grows or vice versa when you understand the company is going to the drain and has no potential on the market, then you can use uh, strategies on the um, uh, down so, mm -hmm. but so it just sounds don't... easy, right? But uh, but it's actually uh, work, and you have to learn the strategies, right? Absolutely. That's why I don't understand people who say, "Oh, I play stock market," uh, because as soon as person say, "I play," like a lottery, market, right? <laughs> it just, yeah. So uh, they, it's a game for them. It's not serious. I uh, tell that I work on the stock market, and if you talk to any. A professional person um, who really focus on that, they never say play. They usually say, I work uh, with shares, I work with market, I, I work, I work, right? Because it is work. You have to know how to analyze the company, you have to understand, understand. because basically, as I said already, when you're buying the ticker, it's not just a ticker, it's a business behind it. But you have to understand what they're buying. Because you should know what they're buying, right? And it doesn't really matter if you buy it for one day, if you buy it for like whole your life, uh, you still understand the fundamentals of the business because what's the point to buy even for one day the crap business which can bust at any time? Like, uh, no, you're not going to risk that. So you're going to buy solid businesses only. So this is the very, very important. I definitely recommend we have few master classes uh, on our YouTube channel. So you just uh, go and have a look how- uh, What are the names? Do you remember? Uh, but we have quite a master classes because last year what we've done, we opened our master classes for everyone. So it's completely oh, uh, it's free, free available. Yeah, it's free. So uh, nice. it, it's usually run only for closed group, for private group of our investor for investment club. But for the last year during the COVID, we just uh, gave it. Mm -hmm. uh, Everyone. So if you go and look at master classes, we have quite a few master classes available. It is a recording. So, uh, but you will learn the process. You understand the process of choosing the company because we were analyzing industries, specific companies, the strategies, etc. Right. So if you want to learn how to do that, uh, there would be probably a link below this video so you can uh, have a look at our educational packages and uh, so, yeah. see. If you so, um, would you recommend this kind of strategies to beginners on the stock market? Uh, Selling shorts not. and uh, working with short squeeze. No, definitely not. Uh, you need to understand it more detail because this strategy has a higher risk. If you compare two strategies, buying shares and holding them for long term, and selling shares and holding them while they're falling, um, even though there are more companies on the market which are in trouble and have a higher potential to go down. But still, if you're wrong, uh, you will be paying monthly payment to the broker. So it will be kind of uh, negatively um, like affecting your cash. Also, you will be uh, responsible for dividends. Uh, and uh, the more you hold in this short position, the more you're paying, right? Uh, when you're buying stock for long, even if you're wrong and the stock collapse in price, it's unrealized loss. So you're actually not losing any money because you're getting dividends if the company pays dividends. So and eventually, if you choose the company correctly, it's going to recover, right? So you're making money, even if it takes longer than you expected. So uh, there are two strategies which are fundamentally different and uh, you need to understand it. So definitely, I don't recommend to use the strategy for the beginners if you don't properly understand it. What I would recommend you, if you like the strategy and you want to test yourself out, do it with no cash. Open a virtual account, paper account mm -hmm. on uh, the broker. So it means that you get the virtual dollars. You can do exactly the same strategy mm -hmm. and practice there. So it's like playing simulator, right? And when you mm -hmm. see it like six months, if you see that it works for you, then already you can implement in real life. Okay, uh, no real uh, money first, right? No real money first, yes, correct. Okay, so let's sum up. For uh, for us to use 
shorts, short strategies. We need to pick a company that is uh, that has problems or is about to go down. Uh, but first of all, I guess we should learn a lot and we should um, analyze uh, fundamentals of this company first. Mm. Correct. And we need to um, uh, realize that we do have uh, quite a responsibility for the broker and huge risks. Correct. Okay, thank you very much for information. It was really useful. If you have any questions or uh, if you want to talk about something else, you have topic in mind, please leave a comment below and we would be happy to talk about it. Igor, thank you very much. Is there <laughs> any words that you would like to wish something for beginners on the stock market? Uh, guys, I just want to tell you that uh, stock market is a fantastic place to make money. And uh, you have to understand that uh, the money on the market moves from people with a no knowledge with no experience to people who has experience and have knowledge. So if you don't want uh, to be in a situation when you're losing money on the market, so definitely learn. The more you know, uh, the more profit is going to be in your account. It's first thing. Second thing, if you uh, planning to put your money into certain assets and using certain strategy, if you feel uncomfortable towards that strategy, don't use it. Only mm -hmm. put your money where you feel comfortable and your heart uh, lies uh, with your kind of understanding of the strategy. Only then do that. Because believe me, it's no good if you make money, but you have a heart attack. It's much better if you uh, keep it and being healthy at the same time. Kind of, we call it swan investors sleep well at night. So be one of them. And in order to do that, just implement the strategies which you fully understand. Uh, how to work. So, uh, and if you don't know, please join our community and uh, we'll be happy to teach you. So. Thank you very much. That was a really good advice. Um, I guess that's it for today. Again, thank you. Quite a lot of information. Leave a comment below. Let us know if you like this video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye. Okay. Guys, bye bye.